everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is still a, a part of animation on the fundamental tutorial. So instead of doing some specific animation, we're going to talk about some basics of animation and so on, so that I don't need to repeat the same information in the future tutorial. I mean, hopefully. So here's the thing. Today's topic is about data transform. And this is a feature which is native in Blender. Uh, so to show you the demonstration more clearly, I'm going to in the, go into the viewport display and turn on the axis. And to show the axis more clearly, I'm going to turn on the wire. So, so now you can see, we can see the uh, x, y, z axis of this cube. And if I'm doing the normal mo modeling, then I'm hitting R and hit X, rotates this cube, like in whatever number, like 30s. Okay. And you can see the uh, local axis of this cube has been rotated. Uh, and if we go to the transform, you can see the rotation X has been rotated at 30 degrees, which is cool. But now here's the issue. If I'm hitting R and hitting Z, then I'm also rotating the cubes, but I'm rotating on the word axis. And the, the Z has been rotated like 30 degrees, but it's word axis. The, po the problem is, what if I want to rotate on local Z axis? Okay. Uh, in terms of modeling, just for your information, in terms of modeling, what you can usually do, so let's clear this up. Then you can hit R and hit ZZ. Then you're rotating on local Z axis, which is very cool. Uh, but you can also see what happens in the transform. So although I'm only, to me, I'm rotating only on Z axis, but to the transform data, it actually rotates everything. Because what it records is the word transform. But what you want is the local transform. So this is the difference. So this can definitely cause some problem if you're keyframing or other things, and including if you're working with animation node because you're changing the rotation. So my problem is, what if I would like to do this numerically through these panels, but I would like to rotate on local z-axis? Here's actually a very easy way. So let's clear up everything. And here is where the data transform will kick in. So what I understand is if I rotate the data transform, the, um, it's not the only the cube has been rotated, but the more importantly, it's the, uh, the origin that has been rotated. That's my understanding or my explanation. You don't necessarily listen to me. I haven't checked the manual for this, but whatever. The whole point is, so now the axis has been offset. The transform data essentially rotates its, its origin of the object. And now if I rotate on the axis, then I'm rotating on its local Z axis instead of the word Z axis. So this is the whole point. And so let's go to the animation node. Oh, by the way, if you would like to call up the, uh, if you would like to transform all the number of your local transform to the data transform, just uh, for your knowledge that uh, then you can rotate like 30 degree and control A and up, uh, apply the rotation to the last. The whole point I would like to say in this case is there is a node which is object transform output. And by using this node, you can control its locations, rotations, and so on and so forth. And if I'm hitting these cubes, if I'm rotating the axis, rotating X axis, I mean rotating X axis first, and then rotate the Z axis, you can see it's still what axis, what we have been seeing. Uh, but the thing is, well, so if I would like to change for local axis, there is actually an advanced option. So if I select the node, hit the M panel, go to the node, then I can turn on the data transform. So all the changes will be applied to the data transform. The local transform will not immediately disappear, but uh, we will talk about that later. So this is essentially what can potentially happen. Um, another way to turn on this feature is you select the node, hit U, and in advanced setting, turn on the data transform. So U basically is just a shortcut key instead of M. Either way, whichever way you like, the same. Okay. And then if we, so in this particular case, what I would like to show you is just now I have two duplicate of transform outputs. 
if both of them then set to the data transform and both of them try to rotate this object, it will only listen to one of them. And the other one will completely lose this function. But the world, instead of having two data transform and the two parameters, two different parameters, I'm going to just change that to normal transform. So now if I'm just trying to rotate on the axis, you can see it's actually the rotating local Z axis. So previously we were talking about the vector in terms of local transformation, but now this we're, we are going to talk about the matrix in local transformation. So previously I just mentioned a problem that whether you can keep the matrix output and the object the transform output at the same time. The answer is no. The reason is that, um, as I said previously, the matrices essentially contains more information. So even if you don't input a rotation, or it seems like you don't input a rotation number, but you are actually putting a rotation number. So it will just cause errors. Not necessarily an error, but it's the transform outputs will be overwrite. So what if I would like to change the local axis through the matrices? Uh, firstly, I will, I'm going to show the offset matrices. This will actually not work. Uh, and by the way, here's the one issue that you probably need to realize because I'm going to, go to transform one cubes, but the uh, offset matrix needs multiple matrices. Uh, so before you plug in a single matrix, it will automatically create a create a matrix list. So this is an unavoidable thing. Um, and it will turn object matrix outputs um, into objects list input. So you have to put a list. So if you put a object input, like select the cube and put that to objects, then it will actually not work. But if you create a list, uh, object list, and uh, let's delete our stuff, and then you can put that in. So this is how it works. So you have to create everything into a list um, if you are only going to affect one object through this offset matrix. Uh, so this is actually not an easy thing to do. I mean, it generates two unnecessary nodes at some point, but it's just, uh, if you have to use that, then it's just something, whatever. But just for knowledge that offset metrics in this case will actually not affect the local transform. Just to test that, you can see if I'm changing the Z, it's word location, okay? So this is completely dumb. So let's forget about what just happens. <laughs> so let's forget about what just happens. But if we are using the matrix mass, so in the past, I mentioned the offset matrices and the matrix mass are more or less the same. At some point, they are, it's true, they are more or less the same. But uh, in this particular case, uh, matrix math is much more advanced compared to offset matrix. And it can affect the local axis. So now if I have, so firstly, you can see I only have uh, four nodes in total. But uh, how many nodes did we actually have? Like uh, five nodes, six, whatever, whatever. Anyway, and if now if I change this transformation, then everything has been multiplied to its local axis. So four nodes to accomplish the function, while the offset matrix requires like about six nodes or so. Very, very cool. This is a very interesting feature. So today's topic is really talking about like a, um, the local transformation in either vectors or metrics. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.